minutes, that's five minutes. Until play starts, all these juggles. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, on court for you we have Mohamed Al Grahi and Yusuf Nizar Saleh. For this match, your left referee is Jeff Williams. Your right referee is Oliver or Licky. And your central referee is Srikant Shahandri. Well, welcome back to the World Squash Championships, the Junior Championships. I'm Marvel Andrew, your commentator for this afternoon's matches. I'm going to be joined shortly by Conrad Timmer for this next match. And Conrad is a English or Polish player who knows a lot of these junior players very well he's come up against them so his insight to these matches will be great and our next match is uh, Mohamed Al Gwahi from Egypt and he's going to take on Youssef Nazir Sally from Kuwait
So if you're watching us on the live stream, get in touch. We're on the, uh, the Twitter hashtag, hashtag WJSC2013. And tell us what you think. Tell us if you're enjoying the matches. Let us know who you think is going to win our semi-finals coming up this afternoon. They're going to be starting at 4 o'clock. And we've got both the ladies, or should I say the girls, and the boys semi-finals. And if they're anything like the quarterfinals we had yesterday, then we're all going to be in for a real treat as the fireworks fly. It was interesting talking to some of the Egyptian girls yesterday and asking them that uh, what their relationship is like off court because when they're on court and that door is shut it's, uh, it's a battle of war on there for sure but uh, when you see them off court you would never think that they'd uh, they'd been in battle on the court it's, uh, it's a very different atmosphere but there's a lot of competition in that camp for the places on the team so every match is taken very, very seriously. So we're about to kick off with this match. So I'd like to say good afternoon to Conrad Timarch joining me in the commentary box here. Hello. How are you doing, Conrad? I'm pretty good. So we've seen some amazing matches yesterday in the quarterfinals. We're in fact all week, but particularly yesterday. And um, I can't wait to see the finals later today. What about you? Oh, same with me. Oh, yesterday was the matches were really tough. A few of them went to went all the way to the fifth game. It was pretty impressive what these guys can do with court. My favorite match actually from yesterday was a girls quarterfinal between two Egyptians. Um, El Madweli and Gora. Gora? Yeah, well, Gora in the number two seed was, uh, was put out by Matwali and, uh, and it was a match that really could have gone either way. Fiercely uh, fiercely competitive. Yeah, especially at 9 or in the fifth. Yeah. I was thinking it's anyone's game. Yeah. Um, but great friends off court, which you wouldn't have thought because uh, the atmosphere on there yesterday. Uh, well, it scared me. Yeah, but everyone in squash knows each other. So I think there is not much. Obviously, the match we're watching, these guys are out of the main draw and fighting for the fifth place. And you know, you've, you've played around the, uh, 
the junior circuit yourself is, is is are these matches still going to be really important to these players or once you're out of the main draw does it sort of ebb away i think you you, you still want to try your best and win all the matches you can um i'm def i'm pretty sure these guys are not gonna take it easy on, on themselves today um, obviously they both had quite tough matches so far but they're still going to push pretty hard. And the Egyptian is taking the control here. So far. seems to have come from just, just the constant pressure, the endless retrieving. When your opponent's doing that, you, you run out of ideas very quickly of wh where on earth are you going to put that ball so that it doesn't come back. That's true, but the, the Egyptian seems just to fire a bit more um, shots in and they come off. Oh, this is a tight shot. It's only the first game, so there may be still some stiffness in the body of, uh, of the Q8, uh, Q8 player. And as you say, these players have uh, played each other quite a few times normally. And uh, it's, it's really the first game, I guess, is about finding the feel of the court, the temperature of the ball changes, and uh, you often see that players maybe don't start so quickly and find it a little difficult to settle down. But uh, but you don't want uh, to lose your way too quickly in the first one and have to be still finding finding the court in the second game. Yeah, definitely, this court, this glass court, or glass court I have here, it plays totally differently to the other glass court we have in the club. And some of the players had more matches on, on the second one. Yeah. Um, the other one seems a little bit more dead. I don't know if you had a hit on this one. Yeah, the, uh, the, the this court for me suits players. Um, I tend to uh, go for the hard and low hit get the rally over quick type of style being of an older generation these days and this court really suits that kind of style if you can get a ball uh, hard and low to the back it really doesn't uh, sit up at all and of course as well on these glass courts if you do get a good whip the ball really does cling onto those side walls whereas in these club courts the ball tends to find its way off the wall a lot easier. Mm, you can see both num number one seeds, they hit so straight, so cleanly. Yeah. That was a great length. Um, that, was, uh, that was pretty tough. Yusuf thought he had it and it either went through his racket or he missed it. Yeah. Business end of the first game. Not a lot in it, but Guahi. Yeah, in front and looking to close out this first game.
great chasing from Youssef, but just too wide on that cross court from the Egyptian. Gives him game ball. Amazing deft touch there from both players, but the Egyptian finishing it off. I'm sure Yusuf won't be too worried about that start. He's uh, finding his way around the court quite well towards the end there. So for any of you just joining us later today, we have our semi-finals and that's going to be kicking off at four o'clock that's four o'clock GMT plus one and uh, the order of play is uh, Yatrab Adel of Egypt who will be taking on Mariam Ibrahim Metwali that's our first match at four o'clock then at five o'clock England's Richie Fallows who will be taking on Karim El Hamami of Egypt and then at six o'clock the Egyptian Nora Shabini will be playing her fellow compatriot Habiba Mohammed. And then our final match of the day will kick off around about seven o'clock, where the number one seed Faris Mohammed Dasuki will take on Abdullah Al Tamimi of Qatar. And I'm sure we are in for a real treat with those matches. So join us for those for sure and if you want to twitter us we're on the hashtag wjsc2013 we'd love to hear from you let us know what you're thinking about the live stream and the coverage we've got here today so here we go okay, two. So, Conrad, the game's coming up later today. Um, obviously, the Egyptians were seeded to have a clean sweep here. Um, and the only two players left in that can upset that are Richie, Richie Fallows from England, and the, uh, the man from Qatar, Al Tamimi. No. Al -Tamimi. What are your thoughts? Can we see an upset? Um, probably everyone would like to see one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's always possible. I think both, both of them have good chances. Um, Richie obviously, Richie was um, seeded 5-8, but he's in the semi-finals, which clearly shows that the seeds can be upset. And uh, Abdullah, I think, was, he was uh, he was also seeded 5-8, and he's in semi-finals. So but definitely, we'll have some good matches on today, and then whoever is going to be in the final. Wasn't one must push it tomorrow. And then the ladies, do you think Shabini is just too strong for any of her compatriots? Yeah, uh, I think so. I think she's just too good. Well, certainly, uh, she's yet to drop a game. Yeah, maybe we'll see that, but I reckon. It will be a clean sweep all the way. I actually asked my friend from a university team what he thinks. And he said, yeah, there is no chance anyone's going to win. Apart from Shabin. Well, we'll see later today. Shabini on at uh, 6 o'clock. That's GMT plus 1. Against uh, Habiba Mohamed. Habiba is really young. She's only 15. And she's in the semi-final of... Uh, Worlds, World Juniors under 19. Very impressive. It is, uh, but you see with the whole Egyptian team, just uh, the, there's so much strength and depth. There's so many other players that are ready to take the place of those that don't perform. So, 
hugely competitive camp and of course hugely successful in our current world of squash. Yeah, last couple of years it's, it's, it seems like everything's going their way. Especially in juniors. Diego, which we saw just just the month before uh, from Peru, uh, he was one of the non-Egyptian winners in British Open. This year. Um, but uh, yeah, last night he was put out by the number one seed. It was a, a pretty brutal match. Yeah, it was three-one, and. Um, up until the third, it was very, very close, and then Paris just completely dominated the whole court. So, you said looking far more comfortable yeah. in this second game. I think he settled down a bit. <coughs> He's uh, not making mistakes. of death. to win this match he really has to stop hitting those those ones in the ten. It does seem that the uh, the unforced errors just come from a frustration of just running out of ideas wherever you put the ball sometimes with these players it just seems it's just endlessly gonna come back and then go looking for shots that just simply aren't there. Yeah, you Alguarthi know, is putting a lot more pressure on uh, Yusuf. So I would, if I was uh, advise him to do anything, I would try and slow it down slightly and uh, get it tighter to the wall. Well, that was good as well. Maybe, maybe he heard you. <laughs> we are quite close to the call, but maybe he did. really not going uh, player from QA, it's, what, it's not his day I think. Well, the point he has one, every single one of those has had to work for very, very hard. There's nothing being given for free. Yep. I think this... Egyptian seems to move him, uh, moving around the court a lot better. So, well, that's quite unfortunate. <laughs> Whenever I say something, it's completely the opposite. But um, seems to be putting a couple, couple of those really attacking posts, which force the Q8 player to move forward. And, uh, and he's hitting good length of the back. So. That's a taxi. He was pretty sure that was going cross court, so on the brink of taking the second game now, Egyptian. Well, he's put that one in the tin. Yep. 
I'm gonna go back to the music duties. He's got a chance to put on some big pressure here. This is a massive point. That's a fantastic shot and three game balls have been saved. Sally now. Can push on. Dying into the neck. So we have a fight on our hands now. So I think she could have got through to that. Tempted to agree, but it's another game ball to the Egyptian. I guess these things even themselves out as a stroke. He's still at 12 all. game ball for Q80. This would be a great game to win. Well, every game is a good one to win, but having been three, three game balls down, definitely be a mental blow to his opponent. Top of the tin, the Q80 is taken it. So, the Egyptian with four game balls in that game didn't convert any of them. It's now one all, very much 
a match in progress now. So this event here in Poland, the biggest event, squash event that Poland has hosted. And uh, it's been a very exciting week for all the players here. And of course for eight of them, the excitement continues later on this afternoon when they try and take their place in the final. And they'll be coming up at four o'clock. We're gonna take a break after this one. But uh, four o'clock is when the semi-finals kick off. And I'd urge you to make sure that you are here for that. it's going to be some of the best squash you'll ever see. So time's up. Anything the coaches did have to say to make a difference. over. It'll be interesting to see who gets the fastest start in this second game. But whether he'll see that last game as a big mental blow, or whether he'll just draw a line under it and start anew. So, Conrad, uh, it's uh, mentally it's pretty hard when you've had four game balls, not converted any of them, and then, and then losing 14 12. Yeah. Uh, On your mistake. So yeah, you take the drop. Um, and definitely, there is a shift in momentum for the QA player uh, after that last game. It seems that uh, seems that Mohammed is, is uh, up on the pace at the beginning of this one. Maybe just trying to speed things up a little bit, unsettle his opponent. Quite likely, uh, but also it, there are still under 19, so sometimes your heart takes over your brain, and you uh, you think that hitting it hard is the best way to do it, to get out of the trouble. It's always worked for me. <laughs> it does actually, it does. But then you don't clear, you just hit it, you stay there. That's true as well. It's harder to clear these days. Yeah. And that's something that uh, you notice when you see players of this age, is their, their agility oh, and their recovery. Yeah. I was talking with Richie Fellows, uh, who had uh, really tough match yesterday and uh, he's looking like a spring chicken today bouncing around a bit of food a bit of sleep and he's ready to go again if I had a match like he had yesterday I wouldn't be ready to go for another week maybe yeah, feel like a pensioner yeah, I'm not quite that old but uh, <laughs> no, it's um, uh, this is the this is the reason that uh, top players tend to retire sort of mid to late 30s, not because they can't play, but the recovery just takes too long. Yeah, squash is a brutal game on, on, on the body. The body takes the toll. But I think England's team is pretty uh, pretty well prepared. They know what to do in situations like this. Probably got a massage yesterday, went to see the physio, slept well, stretched. Uh, a lot of players carry those plastic rolls that they massage themselves now straight after the matches you see it with, uh, with every sport squash is no exception that the uh, 
the routine that players have both before and after matches. Very, very professional, even at the, the junior level. The, uh, the techniques that are used to make sure that recovery is quick are, uh, are very, very important. Definitely. So Sally's got off to a flying start in this second game and continued his good work. Yeah, I think that second game, coming back and winning, gave him a lot more positive attitude coming into the third. Sitting better length as well, that makes a big difference. The rest would spot it. We have a good uh, team, good team of international refs around here. Yeah, they've been uh, they've been very, 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 very good this week. There hasn't uh, they've had some tough matches to referee. As always, the standard very, very high. And that's another unforced error from the Egyptian. Mm. And you can't help feeling that the. Uh, the momentum is well and truly with Yusuf at the moment. As I said, once he starts hitting the better length in this game, then it um, puts more pressure on uh, Mohammed. He's trying that just a little bit too much. Slightly lower than he would normally go for it. Yeah. Uh, so now the Q80 with a five point lead and for him it's approaching the business end of the game whereas He's now got a mountain to climb to get back into this, and uh, two, going 2-1 two down is very different to just going 1-0 one, one down, because uh, it's, uh, it's time to, to put the brakes on the errors, and he's going for shots that just aren't there. And, uh well, you never know. He might... He might a few amazing ones and then that's it perfect tight probably. yeah sometimes for confidence isn't it you go for a pet shot if you get it then it uh, just gives you that lift uh. yeah, when, <laughs> it's, uh, when i go for those shots it's, it's just the uh, hope, hope that it comes up yeah. and it co go, comes off what, what's your confidence shot have you got a shot that you try and play that just gets you back in the the flow. Yeah, like, uh, well, I, I would try to play it. I, I wouldn't say it comes off very often. But uh, of the serve, backhand volley knee. You can play that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Good, good shot. So, quite a quick game there. The Q80 has turned this match around from being 1-0 down, three game balls down. He's now 2-1 up. And uh, you have to say, at 11-3 in that one, Guay has to come out and really make his mark on the fourth game.
So Mohamed Al Guahi will be looking to get a fast start and get his confidence back in this fourth game. He really what do you think, Mark? I um Mohammed's coming back. I, th I think Yusuf is looking very, very strong now and I think it, 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 this first few minutes of this fourth game are absolutely vital. I think if Yusuf can get ahead, he's uh, he's really gonna coming back and winning that uh, that second game, having say four four game balls, just sure. Mohamed doesn't seem to have recovered from that. It's knocked I think, him I think, completely. Uh, the last game, he just didn't have a plan on what to do, how to uh, how to try and contain Yusuf and then take those shots that, that came off in the first game. Yeah, and he just seems to be sort of going through the motions. strange because he, he started this match it's a very good quality squash and that Just ball was called now after that loose straight lump I think Yusuf was looking for the stroke there yeah. so the, uh, the referees have been very good is that you know, you have to be mindful that the, the let and the stroke is there f primarily for safety. It's not there to win points with. And sometimes you do see players that fish a little for the points. But the referees are... Are you talking about yourself, Mark? I, I would never <laughs> do such a thing. <laughs> Actually, that's a lie. They're, you know how it is. You know, you're tired. Yeah, exactly. When you get tired. Two all in the fifth. I think we all... And it's 9-0. And you just think, well... He's in front of me, and the ball's between us. Exactly. No, but the referees, you know, that's their job is to uh, is to put a stop to that kind of play because you want to see the ball played whenever possible. Yeah, and it's uh, nobody likes to see a game that's got lets constantly. Stepped up a little bit this morning. Well, but the first loose ball in at six one. So just put it away. It's sort of now or never, he, he really has to fire all cylinders, completely cut the unforced errors, really concentrate. And that's the thing, it's about concentration. Because of course he's got the ability, all these players have amazing ability, great fitness. It's about the head, what's going on in the head. Yusuf play, is playing really well in this game. Yeah, he's kept the pressure going ever since. Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's good, he needs that move. Mate Yusuf thinks he got that. Well, did he? I wonder if you can see a no, replay yeah. of that. Hand up. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Referee serves in the middle. So, suddenly, so that cross got nick of the serve. Maybe that's all it took. And sometimes that's, a, that's all the player needs. A little bit. It's coming to the side wall, but he's cleared very quickly. Yeah, it might be a There's a stroke, stroke. though. And now it has to be perfect error free squash from the Egyptian. He's got any chance of getting back into this match. quickly you can lo lose lose a game if your head isn't not not there you're not really thinking for sure it could be a par to 11 it really is amazing how quickly now points can be racked up and, and now three. on the brink of okay, um, taking this match
11-3, match to Sally. Sally wins three games to one. 7-11, 14-12, 11-3, 11-3. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for the players. We will now take a short break until four o'clock. So that's an hour and a quarter, and then we'll be back with our semi-finals at four o'clock. We'll see you later this afternoon. Thank you. So there you have it, a little bit of a warm up for later on but the uh, semi-finals are going to kick off at four o'clock that's uh, gmt plus one because we're here in Wrocław in poland and uh, i'll be joined in the commentary box then by richard yendel from canada and uh, we'll be talking you through the afternoon's matches and the evening's matches at four o'clock we've got yathrib adele from Egypt, taking on Mariam Ibrahim Metwali of Egypt. And then at five o'clock, Ruchi Fallows of England, the only Englishman left in the draw, in fact, the only player other than a, a Qatarian, uh, will take on uh, Karim El Hamami of Egypt. At six o'clock, the number one seed, Nora El Shabini, continues her uh, search for a record win here. And she'll be taking on her compatriot Habibi Mohammed. And then our final match will kick off around 7 o'clock with uh, Faris Mohammed Dasuki. And he'll be playing Abdullah Al Tamimi of Qatar. So we'll be back in about an hour and a quarter with our full commentary here from the World Squash Junior Championships. We'll see you later. <laughs>